Powerful solar storms triggered a rare and spectacular celestial occurrence this weekend, making the northern lights visible to far more people than usual. Here's some of the dazzling show that unfolded in parts of northern China overnight. It is the most severe geomagnetic storm in more than two decades to hit Earth. However, experts do warn the storm could potentially cause some communications disruptions in coming days or even weeks. The sun is heading towards what's known as a solar maximum in summer 2025, increasing the risk of storms just like this one. So for more, we're joined by Robin Fiore. She is a research scientist at the Canadian Hazards Information Service of Natural Resources, and she joins us this morning from Ottawa. Good morning to you. I'm really excited to talk to you and also looking at those photos because, you know, we hear northern lights, but we also don't know much about solar storms. So for those who don't know what they are, what is a solar storm and how rare are they? So we have something called a coronal mass ejection that erupts from the sun. This is a huge explosion of particles. We're talking tens of billions of tons of matter, which is on the order of a small moon. And a coronal mass ejection or a CME is something that we see quite often on the sun. But as we move to a period of solar maximum, like you said, we start to see them more and more frequently. So on March, or sorry, May 8th and 9th, we actually saw five CMEs erupting from the sun. And it was kind of the piggyback to arrival of three of those that triggered the spectacular display that we saw on Friday night. How often do we see something like this happen? Well, the aurora are actually observed um, on, a, on a daily basis. We just only typically see them uh, in a higher latitude region called the auroral oval. So a storm of this magnitude hasn't last been seen since October of 2003. Wow. And so let's talk more about what it is exactly about these solar storms that creates these environments where so many other Canadians and, and beyond in other parts of the world were able to see the northern lights uh, here in Ontario. I know in southern Ontario, we were able to see it. I was not one of the lucky ones. I didn't get the timing <laughs> quite right. Um, but what is it about the storm that really creates that perfect storm, uh, for lack of a better word? Sure. Yeah, when the CME arrives at the Earth, it's going to interact with our magnetic field and it causes it to fluctuate. And these perturbations cause what we call a geomagnetic storm. And when that happens, that auroral oval will actually extend down to lower latitudes, pushing it down to the southern, more populated parts of Canada and down even into the United States. On uh, Friday night, we actually had reports of the aurora all the way down to Puerto Rico um, in, uh, on this side of the, the hemisphere and all the way as far north as New Zealand in the southern hemisphere. Are there any concerns when we're talking about these types of storms? Yeah, there's a lot of different critical infrastructure and technology at near the Earth that can be impacted. Um, satellites, which are really right in the path um, of these particles arriving from the sun, can be impacted. We also can see impacts to power systems and any other kinds of long conductors like submarine cables or pipelines. Uh, and then we'll also have impacts to high frequency communications. This is the type of communication that's used by a ham radio or um, sometimes the aviation industry will use that or maritime users, emergency response, not your cell phone, so. You know, I was, um, again, not one of the lucky ones. I did download an app trying to follow these, uh, the KP index, and I was trying to understand yeah. what that meant and when I could run outside and look. And again, the timing just didn't work out. Do I have another chance tonight? And if not, how much longer do I have to wait? <laughs> Well, actually, you do have another chance. So this active region on the sun that was spewing this activity let out another large uh, coronal mass ejection early yesterday morning. And we're expecting that to arrive sometime this afternoon, maybe into the evening. And if Canada is on the night side when that arrives, which is, is looking like it will be, then we do have another excellent chance of seeing the aurora tonight, provided it is not cloudy. <sighs> If you want to see the aurora, though, it's always better if you can leave uh, the city just to get away from those lights because it makes it harder to see. If someone can't get out there tonight, when will be the next opportunity after this particular storm? Well, this, this particular active region is starting to rotate around the side of the sun. So I, I can't say if it's going to produce another CME, but because we're moving to this period of high um, activity with solar maximum approaching, I hope that it's not another 20 years. I hope so too. Robin, thank you so much for your time and your insight this morning. It's really so fun and amazing to see the photos that are coming out of this. That's Robin Fiore, research scientist at the Canadian Hazards Information Service of Natural Resources. Thank you.